Hey everybody, it's Tom with If This Car Could Talk. Welcome to episode number 40. This week, we're celebrating Veterans Day by dedicating this episode, and next Thursdays as well, to all veterans that are serving or who have served our great nation. We're bringing you a one family owned 1979 International Scout II, one of the last ones off the assembly line where many other iconic international vehicles and other products were built. The story gets even better when you hear what the original owner's daughter and her husband want to eventually do with this classic 4x4. So sit back and get ready to be inspired by one couple's dream to help America's veterans and first responders, along with their families, by getting out in nature and enjoying an adventure with them by four-wheeling, hunting, fishing, and boating, all from the vantage point of this Survivor Scout 2. Now, let's go for a ride. I'm Mike Burns. I'm Vanessa Burns. And we own a 1979 International Scout II. Uh, this vehicle has been in the family. Uh, Vanessa's father, Frank Ortiz, bought it out of Tucson in 1980 for $6,995. And the reason why he bought it is because they were looking for vehicles that were off-road. And he was looking for a Blazer or a Bronco. And his friend said, oh no, come check out the International Scouts. They beat them. And they bought a pair together and used to go four-wheel driving all the time. Frank has taken this thing from Rocky Point, uh, Mexico, all the way up into Canada. And at one point lived in Lincoln, Montana, working for the, or the not the railroads, the mining company. And one night when he was driving, he didn't have a four-wheel drive. He came across some deers and I, the road was icy. And he slid it, knew that he was going into a bank, and he said that he was thinking to himself, I'm going to flip this scout, and that's exactly what he did. And it landed on top, and he it has lap belts, and he said he started freaking out trying to get the belt off because he smelled gas coming out. Then uh, he said he calmed down, and he ended up getting the belt out, and he fell down. And he got out, waited for it to blow up, and never blowed up, so he walked about two miles through the snow, to go get help, tow truck driver came and said, well, we can flip it back over. They flipped it back over. He went, they mounted the battery back up and he turned the uh, ignition and started up. He drove it back home and it was about five, six miles. He said it was the worst drive because it was snowing and his front windshield was out. So that's the biggest accident out of it. The last time he drove it was in 1997. Uh, before it just stopped running, he had approximately 160,000 miles on it. Uh, over time, they had always talked about this vehicle going to our oldest daughter, Elena. Uh, it was going to be her first car, and they wanted to rebuild it. But over time, we decided that was not the best option because she cannot drive a stick. Uh, after time, we were looking for something to go four-wheeling in and kept going back between buying a Razor and doing things. And we said, well, for the same price, why don't we just rebuild this Scout? Uh, through Vanessa's work at ADOT, she met a guy named Jen Wade, who's been in, uh, previously interviewed with the 67 Dodge Dart. He owns Just Maintenance. And he said, hey, guess what? I rebuild cars. February 2019, we took the Scout there. And... Um, he started to rebuild it and he said, oh yeah, this is not a problem. But before we took it over there, we started to clean it out to help Jim get along with the process. As I started vacuuming out the back of it, the vinyl carpeting that was in there started deteriorating and then I noticed that holes in the body started getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Frank had left the windows broke on both sides and throughout the years in Tucson it would rain and snow, fill up with water, everything started rusting out in it. Um, and it just became a big mess. There was nothing left to the to the inside of it. As we took it over to Jim's, about the first three weeks, all it was was bad news. The engine was no good. The transmission had a dent in it. Deferential covers had holes in it. There was water here. There was rust here. Brakes were frozen. Uh, gas tank was no good. Carburetor was no good. Uh, the inside needed to be completely rebuilt. As far as this vehicle goes, the only thing that's basically original or not touched on it is the frame, the driver and passenger window, and I think that's pretty much it. Everything else has to have something done to it. 
Um, it's been built from the wheels up. Jim started with the brakes, had to rebuild the axles, had to rebuild the differentials. Um, the radiator was trash. We got rid of the International 345 engine because to find one, it cost more money than what it was worth. And he decided to put a Dodge 360 in it. There was a rebuild from Jasper engine um, and it's a 1980 engine. And with that, it lightened the load by 300 pounds uh, and also gave it another 100 horsepower. We put a three inch lift off the body which gave more room inside the uh, engine compartment so he could add better fans, um, a better radiator, bigger batteries, and just did the rewiring. He did a whole new wiring harness that's more up to date. And if we wanted to, we could actually have power windows in there, but we still have the good old Armstrongs. Uh, we replaced the front seats. Uh, originally, I think Frank put like Impala seats in it. We, uh, Vanessa had read that people have been putting 2005 PT Cruiser seats. We went to pick and pull and got them for $20. Sprayed them off, they're like brand new and they're super comfortable. Um, we got rid of the four speed transmission, uh, manual transmission, because Vanessa can't drive a stick to save her life. And I have bad knees uh, from my time in the service and we put a three speed automatic inside there. We also uh, found reinforced bumpers that can hold a winch. Um, Jim made sure that the back, I think he said it can pull up to like over 10,000 pounds without ripping it off. We've actually taken it four wheeling and hit some rocks and found out that it won't rip off. Um, we've redone the whole inside of the carpet. We put new up to date uh, gauges inside there, uh, put a light bar on it new headlights that are LED um, and just had to basically redo everything. Anything that was plastic was cracked. I had to replace lens covers. Uh, we replaced the carpets that were in there. Uh, Bell Auto, they had to recut all the glass because they're hard to find. Uh, we found a guy up in Prescott that actually sold us parts for cheap because he was going to put a scout together and decided that he wasn't going to do it and gave us a screaming deal on parts. Uh, we got about $1,500, $2,000 worth of parts for like $315, which helped the build because everything's expensive uh, trying to find it because they don't manufacture it anymore when it comes to it. In the future, we're planning on putting in a tire rack in the back for a spare tire that also holds fuel cans. The vehicle comes with a 19-gallon fuel tank but the truck only gets 14 miles to a gallon and less than 10 miles to a gallon if you're off-roading. So long distance gets kind of scary. Um, we tried to find the 33 gallon tank that they used to make and they stopped making them. Uh, we're putting a roll cage inside of it for safety. We're replacing the rear bench seat with some more uh, PT Cruiser seats just because they're more comfortable. We want to put a rack on top so we have places to haul stuff. A 9,500 pound winch. We also have this thing painted a military sand color like the Humvees that went to Iraq because I served 14 years in the military and did two tours uh, over in Iraq and this is kind of us giving our pride to uh, other soldiers that served during that time. And we'll finish it off with building a console in the middle to hold a stereo and eventually putting speakers in it. Right now we do a lot of talking because there's no stereo. But we started this project uh, because we wanted something for me to go hunting with when we wanted to get four-wheel driving. But as a combat veteran during my time in the military, well, I've done stuff that caused me to have a PTSD. I had been in uh, roadside bombs. I have a traumatic brain injury. I have diagnosed depression, seizure, a seizure disorder from it. I have a service animal. Her name's Jovi. You guys have seen her in the pictures. And during my time that all this was going on, I didn't understand what was going on and I turned to drinking to numb the pain. And what it caused was I drank a lot, but eventually I drank so much that all these uh, emotions would come back. I would have survivor's guilt, uh, friends that had passed away, I'd feel guilty. And sometimes God answers your prayers, not how you want it. I wanted just to not wake up the next morning. I woke up the next morning and I went and seeked help uh, and they helped me understand what was going on. And through that, 
uh, began my journey through my faith. My ego kept me from healing because military people are taught not to show emotions. And you have to identify your emotions to know what's hurting. Uh, through my journey with Christ, he helped me see that people love me, that he loved me, and he helped me get rid of these things that I, that I carried bondage to. Um, we used a scout now, and we decided that it, it's a great idea to get the same people out that sit inside their house drinking all the time and go through the pain that I went through. They just don't get outside. And they, they need to find a way to escape. So we opened up a uh, ministry that's just barely getting off the ground. It's called Soldiers uh, Seeking Salvation. But it's not only for uh, veterans, it's for first responders and all their family because they go through the same PTSD. And when soldiers and first responders, they're able to find help if they want to seek help. Not, and it, But it's hard for them because they feel that they um, are labeled if they seek help. We provide getting them out and it's whatever we discuss is just between us the primary focus is to get them out and get them to enjoy something the secondary is sharing the gospel with them uh, we use ecclesiastes uh, 3 8 and it's a time to love a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace and to me that breaks down everything that first responders and soldiers go through uh, we offer the four-wheel driving we also offer fishing uh, we don't charge anybody because they shouldn't be charged the only thing if you go fishing you need a fishing license if you don't have fishing gear we have fishing gear we have a small boat that we use or we go fishing um, off the shore four-wheel driving uh, depends on who it is on where we go Dealing with veterans, some people have a disability where they can't do a lot of rough things, so we find easier areas just to get them out and see sites and have a discussion and, and build a trust and hopefully build a bond and a brotherhood. Our email is uh, soldierseekingsalvation2020 at gmail. Uh, my phone number is 520-460-2476, and that's out there um, for anybody that needs it. Uh, if anybody knows a family member a friend anybody they think uh, that needs to talk to somebody outside of their norm of doctors clinical things uh, VA I'm here I have a degree in Christian counseling I'm working on my master's in pastoral counseling I'm not a certified licensed uh, therapist but I have education in it I also have personal uh, interaction with it through what I've been through and what's helped me. Uh, we're not here to judge, we're just here to help. This uh, this build is, I mean, it's been fun. Uh, without Jim Wade and his generosity, it, it is something that we would not be able. It was a big financial uh, deal just because of what it is. So to make a tribute, we come from a generation of family members that joined the military. My great-grandfather is World War I. My grandfather was in World War II in the Korean War. I have two uncles and an aunt that were in Vietnam. That same aunt went to Desert Storm. I served two tours in Iraq. My little brother served a tour in Iraq and in Afghanistan and various other places. Uh, our son Nicholas uh, joined the army, uh, was stationed at Fort Carson where he was born. His wife uh, did her four years in the military. Then uh, Nick got out, he went army reserves and our daughters Adriana and Adi Bed uh, just joined. Uh, Adi Bed is a 31 Bravo, which is military police, and Adriana is a combat medic, and they're currently using that to go to school at Grand Canyon University because they want to be nurses. And we have uh, stickers that are going on the door that are the Army Star and says U.S. Army. On the hood, it raises forward, so would it be able to display a flag that says U.S. Army, and there's also a silhouette of a soldier in it, and then on the sides it says, uh, it will say Combat Veteran. Uh, we don't have the vinyls on yet. Hopefully we'll have them on uh, before Veterans Day. We plan on using this also just to get, uh, when Veterans Day parades get out there, uh, to get link up with veterans and ha get them to be have a chance to be in the parade the first person that we're going to have is Vanessa's grandfather 
who served in the Air Force. Her side of the family comes from Air Force and Marines down in Tucson. Yeah, and that's what we're hoping um, with her ministry that we can, you know, share our love that we have for her family and let people see that it wasn't always, you know, it, it's, it's not always perfect. But we came from a lot of chaos and together through Christ, we were able to build a strong family with love, putting him at the center. That's a truly inspirational story. Mike and Vanessa are so passionate about realizing their vision that they've asked us to post their contact info here. If you're a veteran, first responder, or even know somebody else that would benefit from this often overlooked special group of people that suffer from things like PTSD and other disorders, you can contact them however and whenever you need to. They're always available. These two are truly doing God's work. Mike is easily accessible if you need an experienced and understanding voice to talk to. They're also needing donations to get this dream closer to reality. They're very humble in making this request, but all that they do and plan to do costs money. Legal help to set up as a nonprofit business, printing flyers and business cards, finishing up the scout, maintenance, etc. Well, you get the idea. If you'd like to help with an in-kind or financial donation, you can speak to them directly. Dana and I really enjoyed spending a recent afternoon four-wheeling with these two inspirational and genuine people, and know this would be a great way for men and women affected by their traumatic experiences to start healing and getting back to a normal life. We sincerely wish Mike and Vanessa all of God's blessings in their newfound calling, and know that many of you will help if you can. Be sure to tune in again this coming Thursday for more information on these iconic International Scout 2s, which seem to be more and more desirable with collectors and enthusiasts. So until next time, stay safe out there, and thanks for watching.